What's up everybody, Jasper Singh here, and the Fed just admitted they were wrong about the recession. In fact, they said that we're actually in a recession right now if their predictions are correct. So what happened was in the first quarter of 2022, January, February, March, our economy declined. And if we see two quarters, meaning six months of an economic decline, that means that we are in a recession. Well, after the first quarter of economic decline, people started to get worried about a recession. However, the Fed kept saying, don't worry, we're not going to enter a recession. Our economy is so strong. Our economy is so robust. Our labor market is so strong. There's no possible way we can enter a recession. And then in the beginning part of June, June 1st, the Atlanta Fed uh, they downward revised their predictions for the second quarter of 2022. They said that our economy is still going to grow in 2022. However, it's only going to grow by 1.3%. No big deal. It's still growth. It's just not as fast as what we would have predicted. Then one week later, on June 7th, they came back and said, okay, it's not going to grow by 1.3%, but our economy is going to grow by 0.9% in the second quarter of 2022. That was June 7th. Then on June 15th, they came back and they said, okay, we were wrong again. Our economy is not going to grow by 0.9%. Our economy is going to grow by 0%. So they're predicting flatline uh, economy, which still technically is not a recession because you need two quarters of economic decline. Then just yesterday on June 30th, they came out again. They downward revised their predictions and they say that our economy is probably going to decline by 1% in the second quarter of 2022, which would mean that technically we are in a recession. And in fact, our, the recession started in January because when you have a recession, the recession technically starts back in the first quarter of when the recession started. So if they are correct, that means the recession started in January of 2022 when everybody was saying there's no chance we're going to have a recession. And if we do have a recession, it's not going to be until 2023. However, the Fed kept saying, don't worry about the recession. It's not possible. Our economy is so strong. The government even said that. And the number one cause of this recession, according to the Fed, is inflation. Now, the Fed is trying to fight inflation by raising interest rates. And obviously, some people have different opinions on how to fight inflation. The state of California is also trying to fight inflation. In fact, they're trying to send out stimulus checks to fight inflation. Uh, they're trying to send out $1,000 inflation relief checks, which if you are subscribed to this channel, I already know is that's probably making you want to pull your hair out. How can you send inflation checks? Uh, sorry, how can you send out stimulus checks to fight inflation? But we'll get to that a little bit later. And so here we are right now with uh, the Federal Reserve Bank now admitting that we will probably enter a recession. However, they did give one little caveat. They said that, okay, although we might be entering a recession right now, that it's going to be short-lived, that this is going to be one of those things where uh, the economy is going to go down, but then it's just going to bounce right back up by quarter three or by quarter four of 2022, which still doesn't make any sense. How in the world are we going to magically just come out of this recession when the thing causing the recession is inflation and we haven't even begun to tame the inflation issue at the time of me recording this video inflation is at the highest level that we've seen in 40 years over 40 years so if inflation is the number one cause of this recession and the federal reserve bank is now in the last few months just starting to fight the inflation problem how is this recession and inflation problem just going to magically go away because the Fed has just started raising interest rates. I know it seems like it's been forever, but they've only started doing this in the last few months. And we have not seen inflation stabilize. We haven't even seen it. We have not seen it start to go down or stabilize. Inflation is still rising at the time of me recording this video. And so if the Fed is still having to raise interest rates, they're still having to pull money out of the economy, that's going to hurt the economy even more because as you raise interest rates, the companies that relied on low interest rates, the cheap money, the free money, well, they're getting hurt. And that's causing these valuations to go down. That's causing layoffs to happen. That's causing some companies to close their doors and go bankrupt. That's causing some companies to get acquired for very cheap. We've been seeing layoffs across the tech sector. And this is really just the beginning because the tech sector was the one the biggest byproduct of the bubble economy from 2020 and 2021 but you're already starting to see some of these 
super low valuation acquisitions because companies have no other option. I'll give you a quick example. I've talked about BlockFi uh, before. And BlockFi, uh, I don't remember the exact numbers. I did read the article earlier today, but they were valued at some billions of dollars in 2021. So they were raising money at a multi-billion dollar valuation. That's B with a uh, boy, B for boy. They're raising money at a multi-billion dollar valuation, um, but then they started running out of money in 2022. And as interest rates went up, they couldn't get more money. So just yesterday, it was announced that FTX, which is a competitor uh, crypto exchange, they are now in contract or they're working to purchase BlockFi, not for multi-billions of dollars, not for $1 billion, not for $100 million, but for just 25 million dollars. We're talking about a massive price cut because they're desperate. If they don't get the cash, then they're going to have to shut their doors. They run out of, they go out of business, everybody loses their jobs. So this is the situation that they're in and they're not the only ones. And we've only begun to start raising interest rates. Inflation has not started going down yet. So these are the things that you want to pay attention to because although the Fed and the government say one thing, Sometimes the reality is something completely different. We saw it with inflation in 2020. Uh, back in 2020, nobody said inflation would be a problem unless you were subscribed to this channel. But the government and the Fed kept saying, there's no inflation issue. It's deflation that's the concern. In 2021, it was that inflation is transitory. This high inflation is going to magically go away. They expected it to go away by the end of 2021. Then they said it would be gone by the end of 2022. Now, here we are in the second half of 2022, and inflation hasn't even started going down yet. Um, and then it wasn't until the end of 2021 that they said inflation is a real problem. And now, just a few months ago, we have begun the fight on inflation. So the inflation fight has just started. The economy is starting to slow down. And then on top of that, we are starting to see consumer spending slow down, which hurts the economy. I mean, it's crazy, but everybody has been saying that the consumer is strong. People can afford this higher inflation, that there's no real issue with uh, inflation and consumer spending and consumer sentiment until now. And the reason why is because, well, people had one paid off a huge chunk of credit card debt in 2020 and 2021. We saw the biggest credit card debt pay down in the history of American time. And two, people had huge savings accounts. People built up the biggest savings accounts ever because of the pandemic. People weren't spending money. They were getting free money from the government. So there was like, people had the ability to spend. Then comes this high inflation and people are forced to spend more money. So what happened? People dug into their savings. So they were still able to spend money, live their life because they had built up savings. And people had the ability to spend on their credit card because their credit cards were no longer maxed out. Because in 2021, we saw the biggest credit card debt pay down ever. Well, then comes the end of 2021 into the beginning part of 2022. And we see the biggest credit card spending boom in the history of American time because people no longer have the ability to fund their expensive lifestyle because inflation is running so hot. And now people's credit card debts are maxed out and people don't have the same savings as they did before. So now people just can't spend it like they did before. This is what's causing consumer spending to go down, which is causing the economy to go down. And then that triggers the next round of dominoes, which is companies now realizing we're not getting the same sales. We're not getting the same revenue. We don't have the same profits. So we have to downsize. We have to stop investing in growth. We have to lay some people off. These are the things that you want to pay attention to. Now, of course, if you want an easy way to stay up to date on what's happening from inflation to the economy, to the stock market, to real estate, to crypto, you have to subscribe to Market Briefs. It is a completely free newsletter that I created where my team breaks down what's happening in the financial markets into a fun, easy to read and witty newsletter. Even if you don't have a finance degree, this newsletter, I promise you, will be super easy to read. That's going to break down all the things that you need to know in five minutes or less because I know your time is valuable. That's why we call it Market Briefs. I promise you, you're going to look forward to reading this email every morning. It's a lot of fun. So if you want to join Market Briefs, it's completely free. I'll put the link to how you can do it down in the description below. This is where now you have some places like California that's trying to fight the inflation problem by sending out more stimulus checks. Now, the argument here is we have a surplus. The government has a surplus. We have this extra cash. So let's just give it to people. And if people have this money, then 
they'll have more money, which will help offset inflation. However, there's the second aspect to everything going on in the economy, which is supply and demand. Because we're already facing supply chain issues, which means that we have a tough time producing the supply to meet all the demand. And that's what's causing the high gas prices. It's uh, contributing to a lot of different issues. And so now, if we just ignore the inflationary, the actual like devaluation of the currency side, if we just focus on the supply and demand side, <clears throat> excuse me, and you just give people more money, what's gonna happen? People are gonna take this cash and they're gonna go spend it. And if business owners see this rise in demand without an increase in supply, what's that gonna do to the prices of things? Well, people are gonna spend their $1,000 relatively quickly because it doesn't take that much effort to spend $1,000, especially in this economy, but then the price of things are gonna go up even more. So uh, it doesn't solve the inflation problem. It might solve it for a short period of time, maybe for a couple months, but then the inflation problem gets even worse. So, you know, this, this is where you really have to understand the cause because you have the Fed and everyone saying that the cause of this recession is inflation. You can't solve an inflation-induced recession by causing more inflation. It just makes the root cause worse. So those are the things that you want to pay attention to. This is where obviously you want to get financially educated. You need to start being smart with your money, put some extra cash aside to protect yourself, but also to look for opportunities because more millionaires are made during market crashes and recessions than any other time because that's when investments and assets go on sale. The reality is booms and busts are a part of our economic system. Now, I know us as a society, us as a system, we're trying to desensitize ourselves from risk I mean, just look at 2020. We were in supposedly the worst economy, the worst economic system since the Great Depression, yet no one really went through that much economic pain. No one felt like we were in the Great Depression. No one felt like we were even in the 2008 recession because money was flowing freely. And I mean, just think about it. In 2021, we were in a recession, yet the sale of luxury items, things like Gucci, things like Louis Vuitton, were breaking record highs. How is it possible that you're in a recession, yet luxury stores are making record sales to regular people? So, you know, all of that has to be paid for at some point that we're paying the price today. And you cannot desensitize yourself from all the risk. All that does is make the bubble bigger. And now what we're seeing is this inflation problem is a real problem and that the economy is now starting to slow down. The Fed is still saying that this uh, while we might see a recession, it's just going to be a short-lived recession that by the end of the year, our economy is going to be booming again, although we still haven't even solved the inflation problem. So this is where you got to be smart and make these decisions for yourself and understand, okay, I need to be smart with my money. I need to put cash aside to protect me. And I also need to have this money to be able to take advantage of opportunities that come my way. Because when you see these types of recessions and market crashes, you're going to see some bad assets pop up. And when you have these types of bad assets that fail, it causes the price of good assets and good investments to come down. This is where you can come in if you have the money and take advantage of that by buying some of these assets, whether it's stocks, whether it's real estate, whether it's cryptocurrency, whether it's a business, you can come in and buy these assets at a discounted price. And then as the economy recovers, your assets then can grow in value and you already own a piece of that but it requires you to one be financially educated and two to be able to put some extra cash aside so whether that means living smaller i know it's hard when you're in a recession but and when you have these high inflationary times and two earning more money maybe it's starting a side hustle getting a promotion getting a bonus uh or starting something else on on your own but creating more of a margin so you have extra cash to now be able to capitalize on opportunities that come your way because you want to be the one that can take advantage of these opportunities instead of being the one that's getting screwed over by the system. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see how you can make money now that the everything bubble is starting to pop, I made a video covering that and you can watch that video by clicking this button right over there. Thank you for watching and as always, keep hustling. I'm not telling you not to invest in any of these asset classes. What I'm telling you is just to understand how these markets work. That way you can find the opportunities.